Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and as you can see today we are reviewing a new Sonoff product and it is brand new because it is getting released on the 16th of June and by the time this video goes out probably it's going to either the same day or a couple of days after that. So this is now available so it's that new. And this is a brand new product from Sonoff dedicated to roller shutters or blinds uh, controller because uh, even though it has two outputs for the you know the two directions it is only designed for that so you can't use it independently as a two channel output uh, two channel output just like uh, you could use the duo for that in the past and it also comes in this new smaller form factor it comes with a esp32 chip so the discovery of the device and pairing is much quicker and as you can see from the box of the colors and the small logo here and also the qr code so this supports matter as well so you can use it as a matter only device uh, if you want to or you can use it with ev link and also then pair it to a a matter enabled network like you know google alexa or apple HomeKit. And as I said, it is dedicated for this. So we will see that the UI is catered for this, you know, scenario. It has nice animation, how the, you know, the, um, the shutter goes down and you can control your blinds based on percentage and it has automatic and manual calibration as well. I haven't been able to test the automatic calibration because I really don't have the setup. This is why I'm using these two light bulbs to illustrate how it works, but uh, it should be able to tell you know how what is the full extent of your blinds when it you know reaches the top that position or the bottom that position but if for some reason that wouldn't work there is a manual uh, option as well and nowadays i'm working some on um, and nowadays i'm working on some other projects uh, so i have limited time but i wanted to get this video out by the time the product goes live so i only had time to test it in the evening application i was not able to you know use it in the iHost yet so probably i would do that in a couple of weeks time in the future when i have a little bit more time and before i go into the review let me talk about an interesting history quirk because i have received this guy about six months ago and this is called the dual um, rbs and when i received the product and a couple of days la later i was told please don't use this product because it has some hardware issues we are working on the fix so this was the original product but then due to these for me unknown hardware issues it was actually discontinued and this uh, mini RBS became the, well, the actual product that got released and the replacement. So I have a little bit of Sonoff history here, a, a discontinued product. So maybe I can test it out in the future as well and see how it works. And, you know, what was the issue with that? If I can figure it out just by, you know, looking at how it works in the evening application. Okay, but let's get on with the review. And then first of all, let me see you know, let me show you how this uh, device works and then we go into the evening application and see how it performs in the app. So this device comes in this very small form factor, just like all the extremes and the new mini products. And um, as you can see, it has a lot of different outputs. So I'm not going to show this old uh, dual RBS anymore. So here, um, if I do from the left, we have the two uh, supply voltage. So it works uh, uh, 110 and 230 volts, uh, so universal voltage. So I have live neutral, so that's where you feed in your fixed um, you know, power, which is coming from a breaker. And then next you have uh, the two outputs. So those are going to be the up direction or the die direction of your motor. So again, it doesn't really matter whether it's, you know, a curtain motor or a blind motor or, you know, Venetian blinds or whatever. I mean, all it does, it just switches these outputs on and off. And of course it switches the mains voltage into these outputs. So make sure that whatever you're using is mains rated. And then on the rightmost two outputs or the terminals, you have the terminals for the switch and you connect the switch between the live and, and the input. So that's where you can control, you know, the up and down motion. Uh, so, you know, going up or going down. And I don't have a proper switch for, um, um, you know, curtains, because normally you would either use a, a, like a two gang switch like this, but this would be momentary or you would use a type of rocker switch, which has the sort of like an up and a down position. Um, and again, you can configure in the settings what type of switch you have. So you can use either of uh, those two that uh, you need. And again, it is designed to be a really small one. So it fits behind the switch in the switch box. 
but as I said, it's the usual shape to all of the recent Mini and Xtreme products. And within the box, you, uh, I mean, this is, comes in a small box. To be honest, this box, the green suggests that it supports matter as well, that you can see here. I don't know what's the deal with the new, you know, color scheme because we haven't seen purple before. Maybe that's going to be the new, you know, the color scheme for all the, uh, you know, the matter or the Wi-Fi and matter combined devices. And you also get a small leaflet and it contains the usual information. The only thing I would um, point out is you have the connection diagrams. So it shows the connection and the wiring for the two separate switches. Uh, that I mentioned. So if you have a separate up and down switch, like momentary switches, or you have one combined switch, which has uh, either an up or a down position or a middle and an up and a down position. And you would wire this like that. And also what is quite useful in this documentation is that it shows you the process of the manual calibration because you can do the manual calibration using the button in here. I mean, normally you would do it from the app, but I think if you would want to use it solely as a meta device, so you don't want to use the evening application, but you would use the QR code to link it directly to a meta system, then you would use this button in order to do the initial calibration, because just in case that calibration would not be available in that ecosystem that you use it with weather. So that option is available. But here I'm going to show you how you do it in the EVLink if you're using it in the EVLink app. So this is the Wi-Fi device. So you can see it already added it to my EVLink application, but normally you click here at the plus button and add device, or you can also scan the QR code, which is on the back of the device. And, uh, but even if you just select add device and then you provide your Wi-Fi credentials because it has the new chip and the Bluetooth stuff, it, it will find it automatically. You don't really have to do anything. I didn't even, you know, move it into pairing mode and it was just working as I was powering up for the first time. If I go into the device, you can see all the, you know, the usual things that you uh, have. So you have an animation or a screen which shows like a roller uh, shutter. You have two options to control it. So you can either use the slider to control the percentage and you could see that how it activated the output in order to move from whatever percentage it was, or you can use these buttons in order to control it. So I press close now. So now the close output is activated and then basically just going to run uh you know to fully close the blinds and then of course you can pose it at a position but now i think it will go to you know 100 percent anyway and you can use the open as well and here below that you have three different buttons which you can long well i mean you set a certain position in the blinds you long press that and then it would remember that uh, position so yeah, I mean, maybe I should have used that other button. So basically these are just free presets that you can just click and then it recalls that position anytime. So you can see that now the up, up output activated and based on the calibration, this is how long it takes for that uh, blind to go fully up. Oh, sorry, uh, to go from fully down to 33%. And we also get some of the usual schedules and timers. So you can pe uh, create a schedule that on, you know, on certain uh, hour and a minute and certain days of the week, you want that go uh, blind to go up or down, so close or open or go to a certain percentage. So you can switch whatever you, you know, how you want to control it. And at that point, it's just going to run the outputs in order for the you know, the blind to reach that position. And of course you can create many of these schedules and you have the similar thing in a timer. So this is like a, like a sleep timer. So you know that you are going to go into bed in like say 30 minutes. So you set it to close and, and if you save, then you just have a one time timer that would close the blinds after half an hour. And that's basically, that's the main control of the device. Um, and yeah, I mean, these are the essential functions, what you need for a um, blind controller and you know, it does it, it, and I like the percentage control. I also like these, uh, uh presets or callouts. And of course the timers and the schedules are nice. So let's look at the settings. So if you click on the three dots, you have the usual version information, you know, assigned location, which home and room this is, uh, this device is at. You can share the device. You can also create groups because again, it's a good idea if you have, you know, multiple um, 
blinds in the same room and you want to control them together, you can just control, uh, so group them together. If they run on, you know, separate RBSs, you can get push, not push notifications, offline alerts. So these are going to be phone notifications and you also have logs. So you see who triggered the device and from what, whether it was external switch the device, you know, which user. So that could be, um, you know, useful information as well. And now we go into the extra settings, which are specific to this device. So there is a, an option for an extra time. So that is something that the, um, uh, the device can run the outputs for an additional amount of time, just to make sure that your blinds closes and opens fully. So I think you would want to use this, especially if you are using the percentage a lot, because the, you know, the percentage control ba is based on time. And then of course that's, you know, based on a, you know, a running time calculation of this device, like it knows that it takes one hour, sorry, <laughs> one minute to fully open the blinds. And if you want to open it 50%, it's going to run the output for uh, 30 minutes. But because of the weight and, you know, maybe the, um, you know, the weight of the blinds or, um, you know, maybe there is a blockage or the motor runs slower for whatever reason, it could get out of sync. So then even if you say, I want my blinds to fully close or fully open, it's not going to be like that. So in that case is, well, you can either use the open or the close to, you know, run them all, all the way to the full extent, or you can also use this extra time, which always is going to add an additional amount of time for this runtime. So again, this is for fine tuning. And I guess in most cases you want, don't want to use, what well, you most probably don't need to use this. Initial settings, this is the calibration I was talking about. And then what you can do here is uh, you can do an automated calibration, uh, which I can do if I click on the start now, but, and it's going to do the um, automated calculation, uh, calibration. The documentation doesn't really say how it actually does this, but I think what it does is probably there is some sort of um, current measurement built inside the unit. So it knows that it's going to engage the, uh, the output and then it's going to count how long it takes for that, you know, output to be on. And it's going to monitor whether the output runs into like a higher, higher current mode uh, when let's say your blinds reach the, uh, the top position and uh, you know, it cannot pull the curtain or the blinds any longer, or in some models they have limit switches, so they automatically uh, turn off. So they know that the motor is not drawing enough current. So they would use this two information to run one of the output or until this one of these condition is met. And then it runs the other output until again, the condition is met. So you can calculate how long it takes for the blinds to go up and down. And that's basically the calibration, because as I said, it's all based on timing. But if what you can also do is you can also do, uh, what is it? Initial settings. Okay. And then start now and you click on this manual and then it's going to tell you that, um, uh, you know, what to do. So I can, you know, do that, uh, let's, you know, click on the open button and I click on that. You can see that the sort of the open or the up output is on. And now I have to run it all the way until the curtain fully opens. And I do this and now, uh, so the, that it remembers that position for the open position and, um, and I click next and I have to click uh, tap on done. So now the blind goes down, you can see the output is on and I have to click on done when the blind reaches the fully closed position. And again, it just measures time and this is how it knows how long it takes for the blind to open or close. So that's it. I mean, it's a really easy calibration. It's easy to do in the app uh, and you know, it's very intuitive. You just read the instructions on the screen and calibration is done. And just in case you need to run the uh, calibration manually. So as I said in the beginning, if you want to set up this device to use matter only, which means you don't, you're not going to use the EVLink application, you can use this manual method that you see here. So uh, you have to hold the button down for 10 seconds and it gives you this uh, blink pattern 
and then you manually open the curtain and then you press the button again and then you close the curtain and you press the button again so again you just follow these instructions you don't need the evening application for that and it's just going to work it will do the calibration and after this calibration you could use this device in your let's say in a matter system and it would be able to control your blinds using percentage as well and going back to the settings because i think i have a few other settings so you can do evlink uh, reboot sub devices so these are the bluetooth devices like the m5 switch and there are a few other things that you can hook up to this that would not be related to the blind control but you can use it as some sort of gateway for those battery operated switches you can change the direction here so if you wire the up and down the other way around you can change it here and then that's the switch mode that i also mentioned in the beginning so if this would be push buttons like momentary push buttons then you would use the pass mode and because these are switches or you would use the traditional um, you know blind switch which has like an up and down and also potentially a middle position then you would use the edge mode and um, yeah and the rest of it wi-fi settings is well that's generic wi-fi settings oh there is one more which is the curtain and the blind type um and that's just you know that's just visual so that's basically how the uh, the front screen appears so you have these swing time uh, cellular venetian shears projector screen owning so it's just going to show you a different animation you know it's a it's a nice uh, sort of cartoony animation I wonder how it's going to look like with the iOS uh, liquid glass design. But I think these applications have a background anyway, so I'm not really sure if the this liquid glass design is going to make any difference to the uh, evening application. But yeah, uh, that's a different thing. So again, you can choose between these. Again, these are just visual. It doesn't really implement, uh, sorry, it doesn't really influence how the application works or how the device works for that matter. And you can also enable the automatic updates. So again, this is a new feature in the new devices. I mean, you know, I had to update the firmware after I got it. So maybe there are going to be some additional firmware updates, uh, which you can also, you know, set the device to automatically apply if you want that. Or if you disable it, then you have to do it manually. And that's it. And last, you have an enable pairing mode. So this is the functionality uh, where if you set this up in the EVLink application and now you want to pair it to a Meta device, then you select this enable pairing mode and that's the QR code that you need to scan in your, um, let's say Google application or the you know, Google Home app or the Alexa app or your HomeKit app. And that's how you would add this device as a Meta device to your Meta network. So you can either you know, scan the QR code or you enter the code below and yeah that's it and just remember if you do this oh um and just remember if you do this then you would be able to control your devices from uh, uh evlink and from the matter as well i think because i put it into i enabled the pairing mode now it's in in pairing mode so that's why it uh, appears as offline but it's going to time out and it's going to come back uh, uh, probably in a few minutes and this pretty much concludes my review of the Sonoff Mini RBS. As I said, it goes live or it has gone live on the 16th of uh, June. And at the moment, well, initially it's available on the IT website for 1790 USD. But then I guess uh, soon it will be available on other platforms or your local uh, smart home store. If you are interested in this product, there is going to be purchasing links in the video description. But I think that's all going to be for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next one.